endoscopic therapy of Barrett's esophagus with high-grade dysplasia and early intramucosal esophageal adenocarcinoma is an accepted and proven viable alternative to esophagectomy. Endoscopic ablation achieves in-situ destruction of Barrett's esophagus and leads to replacement of intestinal metaplasia with normal squamous epithelium when a non-acid environment is maintained. For greater success, ablation is generally combined with endoscopic mucosal resection of neoplastic lesions as stepwise complete EMR may lead to stricture formation requiring multiple dilations. Multiple ablative modalities have been used with varying success including photodynamic therapy, argon plasma coagulation, radiofrequency ablation and cryotherapy. Endoscopic cryotherapy is a type of mucosal ablation that involves non-contact delivery of cryogen to cause tissue destruction by extreme cold temperature. There are currently two cryotherapy devices that have been used for Barrett's esophagus and are available in the United States. These devices differ in the type and method of cryogen delivery. The cryospray ablation device delivers liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade whereas the polar wand device delivers compressed carbon dioxide which freezes to minus 78 degrees centigrade. The latter technique is based on the principle of the Joule-Thomson effect which results in a drop in temperature due to rapid expansion of a compressed gas. Although there is some published evidence on the potential safety and efficacy of liquid nitrogen cryotherapy, there is very limited information on CO2 cryotherapy for treatment of Barrett's esophagus. In the study entitled Safety and Efficacy of Carbon Dioxide Cryotherapy for Treatment of Neoplastic Barrett's Esophagus, Cantor et al. wanted to investigate the safety and efficacy of endoscopic CO2 cryotherapy for primary or rescue treatment of Barrett's esophagus and associated high-grade dysplasia and early ECA with or without previous EMR of lesions. Here is what they have to say. Background and study aims. Endoscopic cryotherapy has been used successfully for the ablation of Barrett's esophagus, but outcome data are limited. The aim of the study was to assess the long-term safety and efficacy of carbon dioxide cryotherapy as primary or rescue treatment for Barrett's esophagus with high-grade dysplasia or neoplasia. Patients and methods. This was a retrospective, single-center, non-randomized study carried out in an academic tertiary care center and affiliated community hospital. A total of 78 patients with neoplastic Barrett's esophagus who had not undergone previous ablation, treatment naive group, or who had persistent or recurrent neoplasia despite previous treatment, rescue treatment group, were enrolled. Visible Barrett's lesions, when present, were removed by endoscopic mucosal resection, which was followed by CO2 cryotherapy until neoplasia had been eradicated, or intervening therapy was necessary, or treatment was considered to have failed. Surveillance biopsies were obtained at standard intervals. Rates of complete response for cancer, high-grade dysplasia, and intestinal metaplasia were calculated. Treatment failure, recurrence, adverse events, progression, and mortality were also recorded. Results. Between 2006 and 2013, 64 evaluable patients, 20 treatment naive, 44 rescue treatment, were treated and followed up for a median time of 4.2 years. At one year, the overall complete response rates was 77% for cancer, 89% for dysplasia, 94% for high-grade dysplasia, 100% for treatment naive, and 91% for rescue treatment, and 55% for intestinal metaplasia. 
long-term complete response for neoplasia with rescue therapy was 87%. Disease-specific mortality was 2%. Treatment failed to eradicate neoplasia in four patients, 6%, all of them in the rescue group. Recurrent or new intestinal metaplasia was detected in 20 out of 64 patients, 31%, after two negative follow-up procedures. Serious adverse events were noted in two patients, 3%. Post-cryotherapy pain occurred in four patients, 6%. Only two of them needed analgesics. No bleeding or new strictures were noted. Buried Barrett's was detected in 5 out of 68 patients, 7%. Conclusions. CO2 cryotherapy was a safe and effective primary curative or rescue therapy for Barrett's neoplasia.